hello friends welcome to now another exciting episode in this design series using photoshop of course in this video i'm going to show you how i created this with photoshop of course with few clicks so i went on to freepik and i searched for couple and um, i got what i was looking for exactly what i needed right so i had to download it and i also went to pngegg.com to look for this image also right so you can come here and um, look for good images png images for your next projects or for your compositions right so after i got my images a whole bunch of them i came back to my pc and i opened up this picture i downloaded from freepik inside of photoshop like this so your thing i did was i removed the background click on remove background and um also i had to make the picture pop more because of course i like when things pop well and then of course i converted this my object like this and um i went into camera roll because i needed it to pop just like i said so i just uh, made a few clicks here like um Turning up the DAs like this, turning up the texture, and um, also reducing the noise. And um, increasing the clarity just a bit. Okay, so without having to waste much time, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is um, create a document. So this time I'm going to be using a 4x5, just like this. And um, RGB resolution stays at 300 pixels. Good, and I'm going to click OK. So the first thing I like to do is I'm going to, and, and let's not forget the um, resource file of this video is in the description of the video itself so just do well to click on the link and um, download these things all right so I'm gonna work on my solid color first so I'm gonna use this color I might change it later on but then I'm gonna start with this then I'm gonna drag in the image remove the background and um, I just have this to work with, right? So I'm just going to position this well in place here. And um, I'm going to click on the mask and I'm going to click on the mask. Make sure your foreground color is black because you're working on a white mask. Make sure you're using the soft round brush and um, gently clean off these areas. Right? So it can actually blend well. And when you're done with that, double click on this. I need to reduce this a bit because it seems to be very, very bright. Like this. Okay, I'm just going to bring this in and put it directly on top of this. Okay, so I'm going to create a mask for this, and the same thing I did for the image, I'm going to increase the size now. I'm just going to rub off the edge like this. I'm going to reduce my flow and I'm going to increase the size of my brush this is too much too small just trying to put it at this is too big and reduce okay so I can work with this so I'm just going to rub off these areas with my flow set to 50 the edges like this 
also these edges here like this and um, somewhat more like this so I'm going to change the blend mode to screen yeah go to solid adjustment color and click on hue and saturation and I'm just going to clip it no not convert to smart objects uh, no control Z good right click and select create clipping mask right so with that done I'm going to use saturation click on colorize and uh, bump this up but make sure your hue is set at that point so I'm going to use the opacity like this okay I think anywhere around 50 is fine and perfect and the fill also I'm going to drop the fill too okay so I'm also going to increase the size of this Okay, so next thing I'm going to do directly on top of this, I'm going to create a new layer. Alright, I'm going to revert this and I'm going to use my brush, set my flow to 100 and I'm going to make my brush bigger and I'm going to paint in white like this. Right, and um, okay. I'm going to use my brush size. Let me zoom in to see what I'm doing clearly. So I'm going to, just going to double more whites. Click three or four times till you get something like this. Just like this well let me do that again so I'll create a new layer with my brush selected my foreground set to white soft round brush I'm just going to make this bigger okay let me use the 1001 so I'll just one two Okay, so twice is good. Right. Okay, I think this works. So I'm just going to go over to my source file. I'm going to bring in this directly on top of the light effect I created my brush. So I'm just going to put this here. Make it bigger slightly, directly above their heads. Like this. Let me zoom in so we see what we're doing clearly. Okay. Great. So this is before and after the lights. So the idea of this layer, I'm going to bring in the next um, element, which is this nice looking background effect. And uh, I'm going to make this bigger like this. Okay. And I'm going to change the blend mode to overlay. And I'm going to mask it out and with my brush selected the foreground color set to black I'm going to conceal all these areas right great okay 
okay so i'm just going to make sure i position this well um uh, so i'm just going to drag up make it bigger um yeah i think this is good click enter when you're done so now that i have this in place Just going to reduce the opacity with the blend mode set to overlay. Just going to drop down the opacity so it's not too obvious. Okay, so you can use my settings for this too. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, Gaussian blur to it, and um, use my settings too. Just like So I'm just going to move this image down a bit and, um, Okay, so I'll go and bring in my next um, element which is this torn paper that I used I'm going to make it small like this and I'm going to drag from the top holding down my shift key I'm going to drag so it becomes like this Okay, good. I'm going to increase the size. Great, so I'm gonna have this here. So just like the torn paper effect. So when you're looking for this on the internet, so you can do well to search for torn paper effect. Okay, so that's me. So I'm just gonna move it to well in place like this. And um then of course I'm going to introduce my text okay so I'm just going to introduce my text and type what I want to impute here so this is love I'm just going to change the font to Agora that I used and um, make this bigger Ctrl T make it bigger and move just move this in place okay Make a duplicate copy of this. Ctrl J. Right, I'm gonna bring this down. And I'm just going to make this smaller. Right, double click on the thumbnail. And I'm gonna type something else. So it's gonna be love theory. Okay. I'm gonna change the font. Most times when you mix uh, fonts that match together, it kind of make um, it makes your design um, spicy and um, it makes it flow or work well, right? So I'm just gonna use this theory and I'm going to give space in between the theory. So I'm just going to let me use three. Okay, let me use this. Great. So I'm using a 900. Right, space in between. So it's gonna be love theory all right so next thing i'm going to do is um, let me shift this to the side a bit okay so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to bring in my text i had already typed this out so to save us a whole lot of time so I'm going to bring this inside here like this and I'm going to just put it here okay so the last thing I'm going to do is select my rectangle too I'm just going to draw a rectangle here right I draw a rectangle here and double click on the thumbnail to activate um, the color picker I'm going to select this color darker one click ok right so with my text so i'm just going to type 5 pm that's the time right i'm going to bring back the spaces from 900 to minus 75 make it bigger 
before that i would like to change this to black italic like this and um let me zoom closer so we'll see things more so i'm going to zoom out here make it bigger right ctrl t to activate your transform and um, when i'm good with the size i'm just going to leave it here so there's one last thing to add spice to this design that i'm going to do or well, not the last thing but this is important create a new layer and um, clip it to the square right invert the colors like this and what i'm going to do is select my brush make it smaller so with my flow set to 60 my flow set to the current value i'm just going to double around the corners to give it this nice looking effect all right i'm going to put here too i'm going to change the color of the rectangle move it all the way down to the deepest part of this color so this can actually stand out well okay so um that's all the details you have in this design all right so it's just to balance things up so i'm going to move to the last the first layer and i'm going to make a snapshot of the whole layer Control alt shift e to make a snapshot of all the layers right then i'm going to convert it to a smart object and i'm going to go over to camera raw filter this is where i'm going to make things um balance things up right so here i'm just going over to the basics and under basics i'm just going to increase the texture all the way up like this not too much plus 10 is good dehaze let's see plus 12 that's fine let me increase the texture up again okay so i'm just going to stay on curves i'm going to click on red i'm going to drag this up add a bit of red to it i'm going to go over to the blue also add some blues to it can you see how it's changing the dynamic of the design itself and I'm just going to go over to the lights, add some more lights to it to make it more realistic. And when I'm done, I'll just click OK. Great. And I'm going to go to noise, add some noise to it, copy my settings, and voila, there you go. Nice. So this is how I created this flyer in Photoshop. If you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really means a whole lot to me. And don't forget to turn on post notification. I'll see you guys. Ciao.